If you eat right and do a certain things with your body, you can drop your sleep quota. I'm getting lazy and I'm sleeping averaging somewhere around four and a half hours now. What type of food we should eat so that our life reaches its full potential for a college or a school-going student? So what kind of food? We must understand this. Food is not a religion, food is not a culture, food is just a fuel for this machine, yes? There may be cultural aspects to the tastes, there may be even religious tinge to the food over a period of time, but essentially food is fuel for this body. So with what kind of food will it function with minimum struggle within itself and maximum impact? So suppose you buy a petrol car and pump diesel into it, it may still roll around but not at its optimum. Similarly, various foods you can eat and still somehow it functions. But those communities which have eaten with care, you can clearly see a distinct difference in the way they function, the levels of intelligence and whatever. So in India, we prescribed food for different people in different way. If you're doing menial jobs, you eat one way because you need physical muscle. If you are doing other kinds of trading and other kinds of activities, you eat another way. If you are a fighting class, you eat differently. And now if you are into education, spiritual process and subtler aspects of life, then you eat differently. If you are in education, one of the greatest challenges is to stay focused on something. The goddamn textbook uh, I'm sorry <laughs> The wonderful textbook that is written is written for an average intelligence. It's a common prescription. It's not written for the brilliant student. It is written in a way that it's a common prescription, everybody gets it. But that textbook, how much effort it is taking for a whole lot of people? how they have to read it ten times to get it. But you lie down in your bed and read a love story, you remember every word, huh? <laughs> yes or no? How come? So you don't lack memory, you don't lack focus. It is just that textbook and you chemistry is not uh, working <laughs> So what you need is a higher level of focus, a higher level of involvement and another great enemy for a student is because this textbook is such a tranquilizer, the moment you open it, <laughs> go to cinema till 2 a.m. you're up, open the textbook at nine o'clock, right there you smash into it. <laughs> so sleep is another big enemy. So what kind of food do you eat so there is no inertia in the body? In yogic way of seeing things, we are looking at tamas, rajas and sattva. Tamas means inertia, rajas means activity but no balance, sattva means absolutely balanced kind of energy. When you're in education, you need a very balanced kind of energy because you have to focus on something which doesn't naturally interest you. It's not something that… with which your chemistry is gelling. If your chemistry is gelling, you are always focused on that one, isn't it? Here there's no chemistry but you have to focus on that. For this you need a balance and a steady mind. For this you need… need to eat in a certain way. To put it very simply, Food goes through your body, through the alimentary canal. From your mouth to your anal outlet, there is a pipe. Through this it runs, going through various stages of digestive process. Many of you are biology people, right? So, it goes through the alimentary canal. Now it begins with the… the lip. Here, if you look at this, all the herbivores and carnivores. If you look at the animal kingdom, there are herbivores and carnivores are two main segments of animals in the world. One eats vegetable matter, another eats meat. 
if you look at the alimentary canal, the way it is built, between herbivores and carnivores, there's a distinct difference. Everything in the human being suggests that you are naturally a herbivore, but for the sake of survival, we became carnivores. If you look at the moment, jaw moment, all the carnivorous animals have only cutting action. Herbivores have cutting and grinding action. There are molars, but carnivores don't have widespread molars, they have just incisors, canines, and everything looks like cutting teeth. So they do only this. All the herbivores do grinding. What do you have? Both. So you are supposed to chew your food. Why you are supposed to chew your food is that you have enzymes in your saliva where if you take a little bit of raw rice and put it in your mouth just for a minute, you will see it turn sweet right here because right here uh, carbohydrate is being converted into sugar, right here. So if you eat properly, then we say about thirty to fifty percent of your digestion should happen in your mouth. So this part of the digestive system is expecting half digested food or partially digested food. But right now the way we're eating is mostly we're putting not only undigested food, but partially destroyed food. So the amount of food that you need to get the same amount of energy has increased. You are eating much more food than what you should eat to generate that much of energy. Because of that, there is inertia in the body because it has to process so much more food than what it should, there is inertia. Once there is inertia, your sleep quota increases. How many hours do you sleep on? Hello? Eight hours. You're going with a prescription, <laughs> hmm? See, this is not that you must deny yourself sleep, that's not the point. But if you eat right and do a certain things with your body, you see very effortlessly within three to four weeks you can drop your sleep quota anywhere between two to three hours. One and a half to three hours very easily you can drop if you just eat consciously and just learn to sit properly, you know, just the posture, your geometry of the body and what goes into the system. If you just manage these two things, you will see sleep quota will just come down like that. Just to tell you, for over twenty-five years, I have largely managed with an average of two and a half hours of sleep. Now I'm getting lazy and I'm sleeping, averaging somewhere around four and a half hours now, but seven days of the week, okay? 365 days, non-stop, on, 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 ev almost every day. My daughter didn't call me for a month, I asked, what the hell is the problem with you, why are you not calling? She said, every six hours you're in the new city, what the hell I'm supposed to do? <laughs> so I said, okay, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> in one day, sometimes we're doing three cities, so it's a non-stop activity. And today, many people around me have learned to do this. Over hundred, hundred and fifty people around me are doing this kind of activity, averaging four hours sleep and seven days of the week, they're on, 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 all the time. And uh, they are not irritated, they are not frustrated, they are joyful and they are wonderful. Why this is this? There are many aspects to this, but one important aspect is food, how you eat. Not only what you eat, how you eat is also very important because food is a live thing. One simple thing all you girls can do is just see various health issues and inertia issue, focus issue, just bring forty to fifty percent of the food in its raw form, that means it's alive. It must be a live cell, it can be a vegetable, it can be a fruit, it can be a nut, it can be sprouted gram. At least forty to fifty percent, the food that you eat must be alive. You eat dead food and you want to live, this is a little difficult thing to do <laughs> because you have to raise the dead now. But if you eat live food, one thing you will see is the state of your mind, your focus and your sleep quotas. And above all, staying awake is not good enough, you have to stay alert, isn't it? How alert you are, how focused you are, only to that extent everything yields to you in this world, isn't it so? What is the level of focus will determine whether the world yields to you or not, isn't it? 
And one more aspect of life, one more aspect of food is, when you consume something, it must be of a simple uh, genetic code in the sense, it must be a very simple software. Vegetables, fruits, nuts, sprouts, they're very simple. More complicated means animal food becomes more and more complicated. Suppose you eat an animal which has some amount of emotion and a life of its own. Now the code in that… we were talking about this, your body is just an accumulation of memory, which means a certain software, isn't it? This is the most complex software. Human software is the most complex software on the planet of all the creatures. So if you eat an animal, particularly a mammal, if you eat, it has a similar kind of complexity, maybe not as complex as this, similar level of complexity because it has thought and emotion of its own. Now for you to break that code and integrate it into your system, you are not fully successful. So it will leave traces of certain qualities within you. You cannot break that code and make it a part of yours because it's a different and complex code. If you eat a leaf, a vegetable, a fruit, a nut or a sprout, this is much simpler. If you must eat non-vegetarian food, you must eat that which is furthest away from you. So generally, fish and water life is furthest away from you. So if you must eat non-vegetarian food, the best thing to eat is uh, you have a… you are on the coast <laughs> Fish is the best thing to eat that way. <laughs>